morning and welcome to Finthorn, one of my favourite places for photography and that you will have seen has featured on this channel many times. But it doesn't matter how many times I come back here, this location, it gives time and time again. But I've got to say, this morning's a bit of a bittersweet morning though, as I was meant to be up there in the Scottish Highlands restarting my lighthouse photography mission. But sadly, something's happened and um, it's not going to happen today, which is unfortunate, but it just means that I'll have to restart it another day, which I'm looking forward to when the time comes. But every cloud has a silver lining and if I hadn't have got up raring to go, ready to go up to the Highlands this morning to start that, um, I wouldn't be here today as an alternative. So I'm hoping this morning's going to be beautiful and we're going to get some interesting light. The great thing actually is that it was forecast this morning to be a really cloudy night with no breaks in the clouds this morning. But as you can probably see, there's barely a cloud in the sky and we've got the total opposite of what was forecast, which in many ways is super exciting. So let the photography journey here at Findhorn commence. any of you are wondering, I've risen my central column on my tripod, which many people say not to do because it makes the tripod unstable, but I have risen it because I'm trying to get the majority of this marum grass up, or down should I say, so that I can see more of the beach huts. It's just allowing for a nicer composition without that distracting grasses obscuring some of, or a lot of the beach huts. So, I think um, I just wanted to, to touch on that because I know people regularly look at what I'm doing with my tripod, what filters I'm using, what you know position my cameras in and stuff and they will ask in the comments. So if you're wondering why I have risen my tripod this morning, it's just simply because of that. Um, I guess I just wanna, I just wanna kind of touch on the fact that there's so many rules in photography and things people say you should never do. And I have to say, if it was windy, I would not do this because it'd make my tripod very unstable. But because we've only got a light breeze this morning, strangely as I've said that, the wind's picked up. But as we've got a sort of light breeze this morning, it's not gonna cause much difference, make much difference to the, the end photograph in terms of camera shake and stuff. And it's just allowing me to eliminate some of that grasses so that I'm getting a more crisper, clearer composition. I've photographed these beach hats so many times now and in fact I wasn't going to concentrate on them this morning, I was going to try and go for something a little bit different, which I'm still going to do once the sun has risen and we've hopefully got that lovely golden glow over the land, but I just love the, the sort of pastely colours against the, the dawn sky, you know that, um, that blue pastely colour that you get on a nice morning like this morning, nice and you know, not many clouds and you get that lovely blue colour around the, the sky and the scene. Like I say, these pastely colours on the beach huts really complement that. I think what's so interesting is I've been photographing these beach huts now for years and they only appeared here, I don't know, about five years ago or something like that. I can't quite remember, but today's the first day that I've come to photograph them where I've seen the wear and tear of the sea on them. There's some rust on some of the doors, some chipped paint work on some of them as well. And I, it's really interesting actually because it kind of shows you how, especially at the coast, how quickly things can decay, decompose, and you know, because they're up against the elements all the time. And it kind of shows that 
you know, the sort of transformation of these beach huts from when they first arrived and they were pristine and brand new to now where the sea is starting to get hold of them and they're starting to get that more rustic feel and look. So I never think it's bad ever to come back and photograph the same subject matter over and over again because it tells a story and like I say, it's great because it really shows the elements here at the sea and how they do affect everything that goes on. And I think that's one of the reasons on top of many other reasons why coastal photography is one of my favourite things or genres to shoot because things change year on year not just physical human things like this but the landscape here as well and I've actually touched on that a few times that I've come to Fintorn in videos in the past how the shifting pebbles, the shifting sands, potentially rising seas and all that kind of stuff is totally changing the landscape here year on year and it's quite fascinating actually to come back here year on year and, and photograph that but this is a more obvious thing that we all see at the coast you know on coastal houses and all sorts you know that gradual decay caused by the sea and it's quite an interesting thing to shoot I think this morning and um, I'm really enjoying it What a morning! We now have these stunning pink clouds above me. Um, I mean, normally in the past I'd be running around like crazy right now trying to find a really interesting and unique composition, but I think, I think I've learnt over the years that sometimes it's actually nice to step back and just admire what's going on and enjoy it. And I think being here this morning and having this vast expanse of sky, sometimes it's nice just to enjoy that rather than running around trying to find that, that photograph. But as I was sort of going on on the theme about uh, of coastal erosion, um, how the coast changes things quite rapidly and uh, being able to come back to the same location time and time again and portray that in your photographs, I'm trying just now to photograph this steps here. Now, I'm not liking this composition and I know a lot of people will probably not be all that happy with this image because there's too much going on. The scene around the steps is just so messy. You've got all these grasses, weeds, growing trees, and it just looks messy, basically. Not by any stretch of the imagination an award-winning photograph or even a beautifully composed photograph. Well, composed isn't the right word. It's more, it's just far too messy a scene to be a really visually striking image. But it tells a story, and that story is how nature, again, and the moving sands and everything here at the coast, sort of engulfed, or has engulfed, sorry, it's getting windy now after we're talking about wind recently, um, in the last bit, um, has sort of engulfed these stairs and is hiding them now under the sands and how the grasses are growing around them, reclaiming it, making it part of nature. And um, although it's a messy image, it tells a story. So I thought I'd take a quick snap of this again because I could come back here in a year or two and this could look completely different again. So it's quite nice to take the time to to photograph these snippets because they're not always going to look like this. And it's something I think to think about in your photography. Something that I always teach actually in workshops and stuff is about trying to find things in your in your work, in your photography, that aren't always there, things that change, and they're where the unique images come from. Messy image, this one, but it tells a story. fresh in my mind I just want to specify something else right now. The sun is due to rise over there and normally you would consider or I think 
normally is not the right word, but when people start photography and they're out for sunrise or sunset, they always shoot towards the sunrise. They get a nice photograph, they wait for the sun to rise, and they get a shot with the sun rising behind their subject matter. But this morning, as you can see, there is a blanket of cloud over there, which means that the sunrise probably isn't going to be as intense, as orange, and as beautiful as I originally thought it was going to be because these clouds have come in. Therefore, the interest is not where the sun is rising. But in the total opposite direction, excuse the wind noise, 180 degrees is where all the interesting clouds are and uh, all the interest is basically and if I had predicted this which obviously it's so difficult to predict weather and what the conditions are going to do I would have not come to the beach I would have gone to the river and got some nice shots of the boats with the epic clouds above them um, but I didn't know that when I arrived here because when I arrived there was very little clouds in the sky and I thought I was going to have a much better chance of getting that orange glow on the beautiful beach and grasses. But I just wanted to make that point because, like I say, many people will just set up and shoot, wait for the sun to rise and shoot the sunrise. But I often find that the most interesting things that happen at this time of day, the most interesting clouds and colours, and where you're going to get those unique shots, or if you turn around and look behind you, always look behind you when you're out with your camera. Sadly, you can have found that epic composition that you wanted and the light doesn't do what it wants. Turn round, things are kicking off massively and you can't find a composition. But that's part of the fun and in many ways that's what's happened to me this morning. I found a few compositions that would have worked really well with the sunrise if we'd got that golden glow. But this is where the epic light is, this is where the epic clouds are. Um, but I'm not, I'm not bothered. Um, I'm not bothered because as I'm, I try and believe now is um, it's the experience of being out, the experience of being out and I don't know whether it's because in recent times I've had the luxury of being able to do this professionally um, and I therefore have more time to come out and do photography than I used to because I used to get so frustrated, so frustrated if I came out and the conditions, you know, I didn't come home with that epic photograph. But I think it's because I was working full time in other jobs and coming out with my camera. I couldn't do it as often as I can now, but now I have the luxury of doing this almost every day if I wanted to. And therefore, when I have mornings where the conditions are epic, but I don't get the, the photographs, I'm not that bothered. I don't know whether it's because I have that luxury now or whether it's because I've just learned to accept things, you know. Um, we can't control the weather, we can't control nature. We've just got to adapt to it and make the most of the situations that we find ourselves in and enjoy the experience. As I said, when the clouds kicked off, I wasn't in the best place to photograph it, but I wasn't going to do what I used to do and run around like a headless chicken trying to find an epic, you know, epic composition. I was just going to peacefully and calmly walk around and see if one would sort of appear for me. And I find actually that that's where... Um, a lot of my joy for photography comes from now. It's the relaxing aspect of it and the acceptance, accepting that you're not always going to get that photograph and just admiring what's going on around you. It's part of the fun. It's good to step back from your camera and just admire it. And just saying that just now, just look at these clouds. Oh, that's so beautiful. with the coastal erosion theme and things changing over time, this beach is full of all these, I don't know, groins or whatever they're called, pieces of metal as well as wood that I guess would have held fishing nets or boats or something in the past. But obviously over time these have corroded and rusted and there's some really interesting uh, seaweeds and things growing on them, really interesting shapes and colours and just again showing that decomposition and showcasing the sort of history of the coast and how the elements here you know really affect everything that us humans as well as the landscape in general um, you know really affects it and changes it over the course of time. 
Okay, I'm not all that happy with this photograph because the tide is receding very quickly and when I first came down here both of these things that I'm photographing were under the water and I had this idea of doing a really nice long exposure of them but the, the tide is just retreating far too quickly for me to get a, a good long exposure shot but I have put my 8 stop filter on and I'm attempting to get some sort of long exposure style image as well as doing some much faster shutter speed shots as well to compare them and see which I prefer um, but it's great, it's great to showcase this, um, this erosion today and, and how the coast is so affected by the elements. Are just phenomenal. I love it when the clouds kick off like this and you get all these interesting shapes and colours. It's just stunning and one thing I'm doing now is I found another, I don't know if you can see it there, another one of these old posts but this, the one I was photographing before was metal. Actually this one's metal too, I thought it was uh, wooden but it's not, it's metal too. It's just got seaweed covered in it which makes it look a bit more wooden. Um, I found that and what I'm doing is I've got really low to the ground and I'm getting a nice reflection shot of it with these interesting clouds above it. Um, it's not the most simplistic of compositions, again it's a little bit messy but I, I really like it in many ways because it showcases something that's not always here, the beautiful sky. We've got interesting shapes in the, in, in the foreground, we've got a focal point, it's beautiful. I just wanted to showcase something really really quickly. Um, I've got a polarising filter on my camera, which I don't off always use for reflection shots because I'm sure many of you will know, polarisers reduce glare quite considerably and um, when you're doing reflection shots you don't really want glare to be gotten rid of because you want that glare for the reflection. But I've just been put, put it on to play around with because I often find with polarising filters that sometimes they do things to your photographs that you aren't always expecting. And I've just put it on here and I've been twisting it around and I'll show you a video now of what it's done. As you can see, putting the polarizer on my camera and twisting it around, I could create about five different photographs with this, you know, with the different colours, highlights, shadows of the, the beach and, and the water around the, the sand shapes. I just thought it was really interesting to actually put on my polarizer and play around with it and see the effects that it was having. And especially when you're shooting something like sand that's got shapes in it, because there is that difference in um, highlight shadows and you know that dense in the sand, using a polarizer, although it gets rid of a lot of the reflection, it can really highlight different aspects of the sand and different patterns and different shapes. And I thought it was an interesting sort of learning tool, I guess, to, to show you guys this morning. Um, you know, something a little bit different and, you know, just to show you that if you have filters, actually play around with them and see what they can do because you know if you've got them you might as well use them and they can you know create a completely different feel and effect in your image <laughs> another vlog. I hope you've enjoyed joining me this morning for this peaceful and tranquil morning in Fintorn. It's been a bit of a roller coaster ride in many ways but it's been so beautiful and I've thoroughly enjoyed being here. I hope you've also enjoyed this sort of reminiscing that I've done this morning of looking back at how the coast can deteriorate things and how things change year on year here and how coming back to this location several times a year 
fills me with a lot of joy because every time is completely different. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed that. Um, as always, huge thank you for watching and I uh, look forward to hopefully seeing you all again next time.